Welcome back everyone. Um, today we're going to do another video on matrices, linear algebra, of course. Um, and for today's video, we're going to be actually exploring some interesting or just a basic and interesting application of matrices. Um, and that namely, um, solving a system of equations, uh, of n equations. In this case, we'll just look at an example of solving a system of two equations using the very interesting properties of matrices. So why don't we get started? So a basic app application for that matter of matrices. Matrices. Okay, just looking at one for the time being. But in my opinion, it's pretty interesting. So let's get started. Let's uh, pick out a system of equations. How about 2x plus 5y equals 19, I guess. Um, let me make this work out. Uh, x minus 2y mm, equals negative 4. Got it. That's our system of two equations. Um, so the, the traditional way of solving it and the way you're probably familiar with is by multiplying this entire equation by negative two and then adding the two equations in order to uh, solve for y and plug in y on one of these two equations and solve for x. Um, but here I'm going to show you an example of doing this process, but utilizing matrices. It's pretty interesting, so let's get started. So what you do first is you rearrange this data, rearrange this data, there's a secret one here, and inside of a matrix. So let's do that real quick. So two, five, one, and negative two, just like that. And then this can be multiplied by x over y, and set that equal to 19 over negative four. Okay, and that is our rearranged data into matrix and into three matrices. So now, if you think if you think this is not equivalent and you don't understand why this would be equivalent, then just use the dot product method of multiplying these matrices, and you'll see that it is in fact equivalent. So two multiplied by x, right? Two x plus 5 multiplied by y, that's 5y, next term, or and this is equal to 19, right? This is equivalent. Well, for the first term, now let's check the second term, right? There's a secret one here, 1 times x is equal to x, right? Minus 2y, minus 2y here. And same thing here, and that's equal to negative 4. So you see this is equivalent. This is, in fact, equivalent. So now we can get comfortable with rearranging this data a little bit. So let's set this equal to uh, capital A, capital A. Let's set this data equal to uh, probably lowercase x. And this is equal to also lowercase b. And the reason I've capitalized this and also I'm gonna bold this as well just make it obvious that this is a matrix. The, re the reason I've done this is because I'm signalizing that this is a matrix. These two are matrices, but they're also vectors. This one could be a, a vector, but we haven't, uh, or this, it doesn't really hint at being a vector in this at this moment in time, but these are obviously column vectors if you're familiar with that. So that's why it's just convention. So, so now, Let's rearrange this into an equation. So a x equals b, right? Same thing here. This is equal to capital A. This is, no, I'm not gonna bold it every time. This is equivalent to x, set that equal to x. And this is equal to b. So this is technically equivalent. And now to solve for x, you just divide both sides by a or multiply both sides by one over a, right? And that's just the inverse of a, right? That's the inversion of a. So this should be equivalent to a to the negative first power or the 
inverse of a multiplied by a x equals a inverse multiplied by b. So this is technically equivalent to this equation, right? We've, multi we've divided both sides by a, or just t taken the inverse of a on both sides. Um, so now uh, this simplifies to the identity matrix, right? Identity matrix times x is equal to a inverse times b. Identity matrix times any other matrix is equal to that same matrix, so it's just equal to x equals a inverse times b. So now to find x, we've it's clearly stated this here. We just find the inverse of this matrix and multiply that by b, or this, right? 19 and negative 4. So let's do that real quick. So let's use this use the formula to find the inverse of this matrix. So first the determinant, right? One over the determinant of this. It's two times negative two, negative four, right? Minus five, right? Because it's a multiplied by d minus b multiplied by c. So negative four minus five multiplied by the adjoint of this as well. So the adjoint of this is just these two terms flipped over and change and uh, alternating the sign for these two. So it's just negative two times two because we've, you see we flipped these terms across this diagonal. And here we just change the signs of these. So if they're both positive, they both become negative, negative one. So basically just multiplying them by negative one. And that what we have here. Yep. So now what we now so now what do you want to do is you want to simply um, just distribute this across the um, across each term in the matrix, right? So now we uh, you know we've covered this before. It's just distributing. It's like the distributive property, but with the matrices. So this is equivalent to. Uh, this simplifies to negative 9, by the way. Uh, this is equivalent to, okay, we're just going to distribute that negative 9 over, negative 1 over 9. So, uh, negative 1 over 9 times negative 2, that's just 2 over 9, right? And then uh, negatives cancel for this, that's just 5 over 9, positive. And then finally, the last row. Uh, 1 over 9 times negative 1, that's just negative, or sorry, it's, it's still po it's still the negative 9, so it's positive uh, 1 over 9, because the negatives cancel and become 0, and become positive, right? Two wrongs make a right. And then negative 9 times 2, it's just negative 1 over 9, sorry, times 2 is just negative 2 over 9. So this should theoretically be our inverse of A. Now let's grab another sheet of paper. We can use the back of this one. So you can see everything. Okay. Now, okay, I'm just going to rearrange the camera a little bit. Okay, so now that we have the inverse of A, all we have to do is just multiply B by the inverse of A here, as we've said in our... Uh, or a formula or whatever you would like to call that. Um, so now let's just place our newly found inverse of a. So that's 2 over 9, 5 over 9, 1 over 9, negative 2 over 9 times nine, positive 19 over negative 4. Just like that. And this is... And now we're just going to use dot product method, right? That's all it is. So we don't have to worry about that paper anymore. So let's simplify this. Okay. 2 over 9 multiplied by 19. That is just 38 over 9, right? And then 5 over 9 multiplied by negative 4, right? We're working downward. Uh, that's just... That is just minus 20 over 9. Okay. Let's 
going to be another column vector, so this is going to be vector. Um, now let's switch rows. So 1 over 9 times 19, that's just 19 over 9. Uh, oh, plus, okay. Plus negative 2 over 9, that is just uh, 8 over 9, right? Because uh, negatives cancel, 2 times 4 is 8. So we get, we result in 8 over 9. Okay, now let's simplify further. This minus that, or this minus this. This is just 18, isn't it? Minus. So that's, we'll see that that simplifies to 2 soon enough. And adding these two together results in 27 over 9, and that's just 3, but we'll just write it out right now. Over 9. And finally, this simplifies to uh, 2 and 3. There we go. And that is our answer, remember? So we assume that x is above and y is below. So 2 would be our solution for x and 3 would be our solution for y. And anyway, column vectors are arranged in that format, if you didn't know. So um, if we have term x like this, that would, uh, you know, and like in, sort of like in ratios, it would be like that as a ratio. But if, as, a, as a matrix, it would usually be like this. But that's human convention. So so now, theoretically, um, uh, if we were to graph the lines, which we might soon enough, but you should already be familiar with how to graph it, just put it into y equals mx plus b form. Oh, sorry about that. That actually really scared me. That was just a bus or something. And if you put it into y equals mx plus b form, you can graph it. And that, you should be familiar with that, everyone. So, so theoretically, uh, the point 3... 2, 3, where this is equal to x and this is equal to y, um, that should be the solution for two of these graph lines. If you were to graph them, that's where they intersect. So why don't we just plug this into our uh, system of two equations. So we have x is equal to 2, okay? So let's rewrite this. this let's work with this equation. Or, you know, this one would actually be easier. x more. Okay, so it, let's set uh, x equal to x. All right. <laughs> obviously. So 2 minus, uh, why don't we just plug in y as well? Minus 6, right? Because 3 minus 6 equals negative 4. And that is true. The equation holds true. Negative 4 is equal to negative 4. So th this should be enough proof that these two uh, equations are equivalent, or this is the correct uh, solution for both equations. So why don't we just try the other equation for Grimm's? So let's set x equal to x and y equal, equal to y and plug in. So substitute. So 2 times 2, that's 4, plus 5y. y is equal to negative, y is equal to 3, so 15, and that's equal to 19. It should be equal to 19. And yes, it is. It simplifies to 19 equals 19. So now we've just proven that this is the correct solution for both equations. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and have an amazing day. Hope everyone's safe at home, by the way. Goodbye.